Good morning, everyone. My name is Natalie Whitman, and I am the graduate assistant in the Counseling Center. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about cabin fever, what it is, um, what influences cabin fever, some emotions you might be feeling, and then how you can combat it to overcome this cabin fever you might be feeling during this COVID-19 outbreak. So to get us started, I think it's important to let you all know that cabin fever is not a medical condition. You can't go to the doctor and be diagnosed with cabin fever and they can't give you medication to get you through it. It's more so a psychological um, thing that we feel where we have from being stuck inside for too much time, um, potentially being isolated for too much time. A lot of times cabin fever is associated with the winter because it's very dark and cold and there's usually a lot of snow on the ground, can't go outside. So we're kind of stuck inside, um, not really able to go or do anything. And it's also important to note that cabin fever can manifest itself in many different other disorders such as depression, anxiety. Um, so to keep that in mind, if you are starting to feel some of the symptoms that we are going to talk about in this webinar. And these two pictures on the bottom, you might be feeling that way now where you just want to burst out of your house and get as far away from it as possible, or you feel kind of depressed and are just stuck doing nothing. And that's okay. A lot of us are feeling that now. And I think it's important to validate those feelings. Some of the symptoms you might be feeling, this is just a short list of them, but um, they include restlessness or feeling lethargic. You kind of just don't really want to do too much or you might be bored. Um, I think boredom comes into these, what are we feeling symptoms. You might be feeling sad or depressed because you're stuck inside, can't do the things that you used to do, see the friends you used to see. You might have a lack of patience. Maybe you're, you have more of an attitude with the people that you live with than normal um, just because you're doing the same thing over and over again. A lot of times with boredom comes, or stress comes stress eating or eating because we're bored. So you might be craving foods high in salt, high in sugar. And it's really important to, when you get those food cravings, to curb them with a healthier option. You might feel like you can't handle the stress and the stress is kind of overtaking you. Um, and again, you have to identify some coping strategies to help you get, to help you get you past that. You might not be feeling motivated again or hopeless, um, like it's not gonna end or you don't wanna wake up in the morning because you're tired or you're sad or you feel like there's no point to going to class because it's not the same as in person. And again, we talked last week about setting a schedule for yourself and sticking to that schedule. That's gonna help with a lot of these symptoms and um, keep a routine that feels pretty normal to you. I'm also going to talk on some influences on cabin fever and that it looks a little bit different for extroverts, introverts, and extroverts. Introverts are might be feeling a little better during this time because they like the downtime. They like to be with themselves. Um, so it might be a little easier than out in the world where there's a lot going on, a lot of action. Whereas the extroverts who like those interactions with people very much and need that, um, those interactions with people to get through their days might be struggling because they are stuck with either the same people or a very limited number of people. So it's just important to keep in mind um, our personalities and the personalities of the people that you live with um, when thinking about cabin fever and how people might be acting with each other. Another influence is privilege. And I think this one poster, this one picture on the screen really explains what we, what I mean when I say privilege. Um, some people, you know, they might, it might be easy for them to work from home. They have really good internet access. They have extra time to do fun things. They maybe have a big family, a very caring family that they get along well and do fun things um, to pass the time. 
And that's really great. But it's also to keep in mind the people who maybe do not have some of those privileges where when they, either they can't work from home or um, they might be more likely to be immunocompromised. So even if they have to go out to the grocery store, they can't go out um, for the, to get those five to 10 minutes outside of the house. Um, or even some people might not have a home to be isolate quarantined in. Um, and that's adding to the stressors that we're facing as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. So again, just trying to keep in mind um, who you're surrounded by and keep in mind the friends that you have and talk to them about their experiences and support them. Some people also have different relationships with the people that they're quarantined with. It's important to keep in mind that you might have two parents and three siblings and a dog to spend time with, where someone else might have one parent that works all day and no siblings, so they're left alone in the house all day. Um, and just that dynamic that can look a little bit differently for the person who has different privileges and relationships with people that they're with. Another influence on cabin fever is that we are physically distant, yes, but it is important to stay socially connected. And if we can stay socially connected via social media, Zoom, like these webinars, um, FaceTiming, calling people, that is gonna help those cabin fever feelings of isolation and being stuck inside with the same people in the same routine. So I found this picture of different quarantine houses with different famous people. And I thought it'd be interesting for you all to take a look at this picture and kind of pick which house you would want to be in. Um, so I'll just give you a minute or two to look it over and think in your mind or talk with a friend or a family member with, that you're with to discuss what house you would like to be quarantined in. All right, we can go ahead and move on. Now I wanna give you about a minute or so to think about some things that you like to do to combat cabin fever. What are you doing on a daily basis to get over the feelings that you, or emotions that you're having and pass the time? I came up with a list of things that you can do. Um, hopefully you're doing some of these. If you're not, I'm hopefully giving you some additional ideas of things that you can do to combat cabin fever. One is start an at-home project. Maybe you have a very messy room in your house that you wanna clean out. Sort through it, organize some things, get, put things in a giveaway pile um, to get that done. Maybe it's painting your bedroom. Start that since you're home and you have the time. Try a new hobby. Yoga is something that the counseling center does. And I know I'm not the best person to do yoga, but um, now's the time to try something new and get involved with something new that can help your overall well being. Break out a good book. Now's the time to read a nice book. If it's nice out, nice weather out, get on your deck, your patio, outside space to get some fresh air and really kind of relax and read a good book. Try a new recipe. If you're having those food cravings, you know, look up some healthy recipes that you can do that helps to pass the time. Also then you're feeding and nourishing your body, giving you energy to tackle the homework that you have, the exams that you have to take, um, or the relationships you have in your household because you need energy for that too. You can do a puzzle, pull out some old board games or a pack of cards if you have people to play with. That's a great way to pass time and get some laughs out. Engage in some pre-spring cleaning. Spring's right around the corner. Or I mean, spring is here actually. Um, so, you know, start cleaning around your house, 
organize it, make it smell really nice. You know, movie and popcorn night. You can journal, keep a daily journal of some things that you're feeling, what you've done. A great way, a great um, app that actually the Counseling Center uses is WellTrack. And you can sign up for that using your Susquehanna email and password. And you can daily journal on that app. You can do mood checks on that app to check in with yourself and keep, keep um, track of how you're feeling and what you're doing throughout the day. Go for a walk while it's nice out. Get some fresh air, get some exercise, get your blood pumping, heart pumping. That's good stuff. Also, research at-home exercise routines. Yeah, gyms are closed, but there are other ways that you can work out at home. So get creative in what you want to do. And then finally, to wrap this up, I want to talk about our resources that we have available. The first one is the Counseling Center services. We offer, we're still offering open hours to all students. Um, so if you call our phone number, 570-372-4751, you can speak with a therapist today. So if you're feeling stressed, anxious, depressed, or just need someone to talk to, because this is a hard time that we're experiencing, call, our, call the Counseling Center and talk to someone. We're ready to help you. Also, keep an eye out on our social media pages. That's where we're promoting a lot of the work that we're doing, little different programs. Um, our webinar links are on there. And just some supportive materials to um, look at to make you feel a little bit better. We're also on Monday, this coming Monday at 8 p.m., having a Q&A session with Dr. Stacy and Dr. Dayal from the Health Center. Um, that's going to be a live Zoom session. So check our social media for the link and my SU for the link. This is a time where you can come and ask questions about COVID-19, about our counseling center services. We really wanna answer the questions that you have. We also have our outreach programs, like I mentioned. We have yoga going on Mondays and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. on our Facebook Live page. We have guided meditation weekly at 9.30 a.m. on Tuesdays. We have co classes going on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as stress-less classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we're also are continuing with the webinars. Um, so we're sticking with the Thursdays at 11.35 time. And next week, we're gonna be talking about being physically distant and socially connected, but socially connected and how that might look or be affecting your experience during this outbreak. And then finally, this link I have here is a link to a workbook around coronavirus anxiety. I highly recommend downloading it and taking a look at it. I'll post it on our social media. Even though you might not want to work through the book fully, I think if you skim it and I think if you skim it, you will find something helpful in it. Um, to make you feel a little bit better, it kind of walks through what you might be feeling and how to manage those thoughts and emotions. So I highly recommend that book for you. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We are here to help you and we want to make your, the end of the semester as smooth as possible for you. And I hope you enjoy today's webinar. And I hope that we will see you next week at 1135 for Physically Distant, Socially Connected. Have a great week, everyone.